North of Newcastle at a stone's throw from Scotland, you will find Northumberland National Park. Every year, millions of visitors flock to the area to experience the beautiful beaches, starry skies and ancient architecture. The most popular attractions include the castles of Annick and Bamber, Holy Island and Hadrian's Wall. But this video isn't about those. Instead, here are the best Northumberland attractions nobody visits. Dunstamber Castle. There are lots of castles in Northumberland, over 70 in total, but Dunstamber Castle is one of the slightly less popular ones, yet still remains equally as impressive. Built in the 14th century, this castle can be reached by a short linear walk along the beach and the perimeter of the Dunstamber Golf Course. There is free roadside parking at Dunstan Steads. Here are the coordinates, you can also find these in the description of the video. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe. After parking up, head towards the sea. Shortly after passing through the sand dunes, you'll find yourself in a long stretch of golden sand. To your right, you'll see the castle that you're heading towards. Eventually, you'll need to leave the beach and join the coastal path which perimeters the golf course. While walking on this path, keep an eye out for stray golf balls. As you approach a gate directly beneath the castle, you can enjoy the cliff face and many seabirds that inhabit them. There's also a weird rock formation that looks like a road that's been squashed and it's caused it to create this ripple effect. From here, follow the path through the gate and around the castle until you reach the main entrance. You can go in the castle, but it does cost you money and it's pretty expensive. It's priced at £8.50 per adult. The good news is, if you're a National Trust or an English Heritage member, you'll be able to enter for free. If not though, don't worry, you can still appreciate the castle from outside if you don't want to pay. While you're here, you can enjoy the views looking out to the sea and looking down on the nesting seabirds. Then it's up to you, you can carry on walking along the coast, or you can turn around and head back to the car. Linhope Spout Linhope Spout is a waterfall that stands at 60 feet tall and has a plunge pool that's 16 feet deep. During summer, it's the perfect place to cool off in the water. And if you're feeling daring, there are plenty of spots you can jump in from. People have even been known to jump from the very top. To get here, head towards Linhope, and just before you reach Heartside Farm, you can pull up on the grass. The walk there and back is around three miles in total, and there are a few little up and down sections within that. To start with, follow the road straight ahead past the farm before descending into the village of Linhope. Shortly after heading over the bridge with the river running beneath you, take a left, followed immediately by a right turn that will take you up a dirt track. This track runs alongside the woodland. As you climb up, be on the lookout for red squirrels which are not uncommon in the area. You will reach a signpost reading Linhope Spout. From here, just keep on this path until you reach the waterfall. There is a little bit of a scramble to get down to the bottom of the fall, or you can just take a steep grassy path. Once you get down there, there's a big grass area area which is great for a picnic and while you're down there you can get in the water five crags walk in the Cheviot Hills. Our next location is in the impressive Heart Hope Valley. This walk takes you to five different crags over an eight mile walk with a total ascent of 2,100 feet. There are several places you can park next to the river which runs alongside the road. But be aware, this is a decent length walk and includes a few steep sections, but the views make it worth the walk. The crags you will visit in order are Carling Crag, Horson Crags, Housey Crags, Long Crags, and Langley Crags. If it's windy, make sure you're extra careful though when climbing on the crags, because you don't want to fall off. If you don't fancy such a long walk, the valley's still worth visiting just to enjoy the postcard perfect view that's there. If this walk interests you, I have made a full video on this walk which is out now on my channel, so go check it out. Hethpool Lynn. Back to waterfalls, Hethpool Lynn is less of a fall and more of an intense current that surges through the surrounding rock. The stunning views of the valley and the wild goats that roam the area make this a fantastic two mile walk. Head towards Hethpool and just after leaving Hethpool, there is a free car park on your left. To get to the fall, head back down the road into Hethpool, then turn right as the road swings left. As you drop down the hill, there is a stile to your left. Climb over this and then head straight forward until you reach a wooden walkway that soon becomes a more defined path. Go straight through the next gate and across the small footbridge. The river is now right next to you. Soon after, you'll hear the roar of the water crashing against the rocks. There are several places you can walk down to get a better view of the river. Carry on along the path until it forces you over a bridge. Soon after, you can scramble down to get an even closer look at the water and looking upstream at the strong current coming towards you. After this, go back up the path and head up the hill. This is where it starts to get a bit muddy and boggy. Keep going until you reach a gate. Head through it, then unfortunately you've got more boggy terrain to negotiate, but it soon becomes firmer ground and eventually turns into a dirt track. Before long, you'll be heading for a section of gorse bushes that lead you to a bridge, which may look familiar. That's because once you cross it, you're back onto your outward route. Cater and Hurl. Cater and Hurl 
if I'm pronouncing it right, is a secret cave and this is the most hidden spot on this list. If you didn't know about it and you did not know it was here, it would be like finding a needle in a haystack. Again, for this one, there's free roadside parking. So to get here, you need to turn off the A1 where it's signposted for North Charlton. Keep going along this road until the road swings right and you're presented with a sign pointing down an off-road track. I've put the coordinates on the screen and in the description because this might be a little bit difficult to find. Once you're all parked up, you just need to head down the track which the signpost is pointing down. Keep following this wide grassy track until you reach a small wooden footpath marker. You want to turn left when you reach this. Follow this path for a little bit more until there's another smaller path on your left. This will take you to the hidden cave. You'll know you're there when you reach a break in the heather. There are steps down into the cave which can be a bit muddy and slippy but as long as you're careful you'll be fine. And it's actually believed that this was once used as a smuggler's hiding place. Once you're in there, there really is not much room at all. It is a squeeze and you'll struggle to even fit two people next to each other at most points. And as soon as you go a few metres in, you'll definitely need a torch because it's going to be in complete darkness. The good news is though, if you do have a torch, you can walk in a decent way until eventually you reach this part which almost looks like a dead end at first. But you can actually crawl underneath it on your stomach and apparently there's a small chamber inside there. Unfortunately when we went it was extremely muddy and wet on the floor and I did not fancy laying down on my stomach and crawling through and getting caked in mud. But if you fancied it or if it were dry, there's always that option to try that out. Preston Tower. The final place on this list is Preston Tower. It's a 14th century tower which has now been converted into a small museum. To enter there's a £2 per person donation via an honesty box. Once inside there's a variety of different rooms which all have informational boards dotted around explaining the history of each room. As you keep climbing up you'll reach the complex inner clock workings that are still functional today. Once you're here there's just one more flight of steps before you're on top of the tower and you can take in the views that span across miles of the surrounding area. If you fancied spending a bit more time here there's a few little footpaths that you can walk around and it gives you a great opportunity to look at the surrounding gardens and see the tower from every different angle. And believe it or not when we went in the school holidays to this attraction we literally saw no one else in there we had the whole tower to ourselves. So there you go it's the best Northumberland attractions that nobody visits. Let me know which one your favourite one is in the comments. If you did enjoy this video don't forget to leave a like, drop a sub and I'll see you in the next video.